What's going on guys? This is Cole aka Proximity bringing you a brand new video today. Today I wanted to cover some overall just gunfighting, how to win more 1v1s, just giving some tips on that subject. It's been requested a lot so I'm gonna try to run down some few tips I have for you guys and hopefully they can help you win more one-on-one -on -one encounters in the future. So we're gonna hop right into it. For obvious reasons it's very important that you're confident with your gun skill and your strafing abilities. You need to have a solid strafe and obviously a uh, good set of thumbs so you can have a good amount of accuracy. I've done tip videos on both of those subjects, so I'm not going to be covering any of that in this video. Uh, I'm going to link those right now if you guys want to check that out. So if you've watched those, then you're good to go. I'm just going to move right into the actual like winning your one-on-ones while applying the knowledge from both those videos. So as far as the most predictable one-on-one -on -one encounter, what a lot of people imagine in one-on-one -on -one encounters are, are the situation that Dallas and I find ourselves in here. You know, let's just say we're out in an open plan or kind of this open area where you're pretty much going to be relying on your strafe and your shot you know how talented are you with just your strafe and how confident are you in your shot you need to be good with both you need to be fine in tune with both because in these situations that's all that's going to help you it's going to come down to pure talent pure skill who's better at strafing and shooting at the same time but you'll often find in one-on-one -on -one situations or one-on-one -on -one encounters that it's not so clean and out in the open like this there's often times that you're going to be able to use some of your surroundings to your advantage so I'm going to try to explain a lot of scenarios where you can often find things on the map that you can use to your advantage that'll help you get that edge and win those one-on-one -on -one encounters that could be really important for the map, you know, could be big, could win you a game. So I'm going to try to simulate some of those situations and explain good times to use them. So a really good thing that I recommend using in any map that you, you know, find this available to you is something called a pole strafe. Uh, as you see, I have a pole here to use to my advantage. Let's say Dallas came in here from the blue ramp. Now he starts engaging me here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is try to tuck myself behind this pole because I could stay out in the open here and just challenge him one-on-one, -on -one, no cover, right? And that's fine, except that makes it easy for him because now it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. He probably has first shot because he rounded this corner. So if he has first shot on me, I can pop behind this pole and start strafing out to either side while putting shots on him. And I can even double back from the same side I just came from. This makes it very hard for him to predict where I'm going and make it very easy for me to win the battle. So he has no aim assist when I'm on the other side of this pole. Additionally, he doesn't know which side I'm gonna come out of. You know, there's really just like a 50-50 shot. You know, you think like, oh, you're gonna come out one of two ways, but like, I know which way I'm going, but he doesn't. So that's just a good example of using my surroundings to my advantage. If I'm down a shot, if he rounds the corner and puts me down a shot, he's able, or I'm able to just hop behind that pole and then just give him the dirty because I'm able to use that to my advantage. And he's kind of stuck out in this open, you know, this open area. So that's just like a, you know, a, a clean example of you know, first thing you can do. This, you know, things like that, using a pole to your advantage, or like if we backed up farther into here, you know, into blue here, if he, he was chasing me, like let's say come over here real quick. If we were back on this end and we were in engagement, I could still do the same concept by peep strafing him here. Just making me, myself harder to hit. You know, he's having a hard time putting shots on me. I'm just peeking around and just placing shots because I know he's gonna be there waiting for me. You now it makes it like really easy for myself. Now I chose this map plaza because there's a lot of nice little corners to stand in a little ways to peek and it's just a really good way to engage people you know you can do the similar thing pretty much in any doorway that's a really good thing to do you know you don't always have to keep yourself out in the open on one-on-one -on -one situations you know if you're really confident in your shot and your strafe you absolutely can but if you want to just provide yourself with a little bit of an advantage that's a really good way to do it you know stand on the other side of a doorway and just kind of peep out at somebody and shoot them if Dallas stays here in blue and I'm in yellow I can peek at him and just put shots whenever I want you know and then the the um, encounters of my hands you know if, if it's five shot kill and you know, I get up by one shot then I can confidently step out and challenge him you know if, if I peek get a shot advantage on him then I'm feeling good you know I, I'm like okay now I can challenge now I'm you know I'm, I'm an advantage because I'm a shot up if there's a five total shots I need to hit I'm already one one ahead of him so if I peek here, get a shot, and he misses, now I can just challenge him. And, you know, of course, I would not actually try to kill him right now. But, it, you know, I could challenge him and kill him. And that's, you know, that's a lot of one-on-ones is playing your shots, counting the bullets, being at an advantage. And that's a good way to do it is just by peep shotting. Another good way to keep yourself at an advantage in a one-on-one situation is trying to grab the high ground. And any chance you have a good, you know, opportunity to grab high ground and use that to your advantage, I absolutely recommend doing so. You know, in this situation, in this one-on-one -on -one with Dallas, um... You know, I have the high ground, I have a clear advantage here because he has nowhere to run and I can just back off anytime I need to. See, he has no more angle on me, which is why being in a high ground is extremely advantageous. And a lot of you guys might think that's pretty obvious, but I, I feel like a lot of people have a bad habit of seeing somebody like this and doing this and dropping. You know, the moment you drop, you, you eliminate any um, advantage that you might have had on that person, any edge, and you make it very easy for them, especially because if you're flying through the air, you're on a set path and they have an easy shot at you. So I, I really... You know, want to emphasize, you know, high ground is such an advantage in a gun battle for the, for the, you know, 
the, the sheer fact that I can just back off whenever I want, and he has nowhere to go, so, you know, like, he has a hard time hitting me, and I can just make it difficult, and he has nowhere to run, so, you know, in, in those situations, you never want to leave your high ground, keep that high ground, don't drop down to their level, you're just making it easier for them, that really doesn't, like, help you, if you think, like, falling through the air is going to make it hard for him, it really isn't, because it's so easy to follow, uh, you know, and additionally, on the other end of things, let's say Dallas is up there, let's say Dallas is on the high ground, if I see him here and I'm already down a shot, unless I have the advantage, my first reaction is going to be to try to get out of there. I don't want to stay here, stay out in the open and try to like, you know, fight against somebody in the high ground. You know, I'm going to lose that pretty much every single time. And honestly, a lot of one-on-one -on -one encounters is just knowing when and when not to challenge. You know, you, you can't be expected to win every single one-on-one. -on -one. So knowing a good time to run, in, in example, being down a shot when the other person has high ground is, is a good time to not challenge that person and try to play your life so i feel like a lot of people just get discouraged knowing like dang i always lose that you know that one-on-one -on -one to that person who has the high ground who has like first shot on me like you need to like pay attention if you're already down a shot don't beat yourself up you're not expected to win that just try to play your life try to run away don't get caught out in the open uh you're not really gonna have any sort of advantage winning that but uh, yeah so to emphasize stay at the high ground if you have the high ground you don't want to drop down and make it easy for the other person another great thing you can do in a halo 5 since halo 5 uh like you know oh so nicely it provides you with an assault rifle which a lot of people don't really touch uh in a lot of situations it's really not a good weapon to use but in some situations including at a high level it is extremely effective and the nice thing about the ar it's pretty easy to aim so you really can like go crazy with your strafe if you'd like you know especially in the close quarters you can you know put on like the fastest craziest crouch strafe you'd like while still being able to pretty easily aim with the ar so i really recommend using the ar in close encounters you know, if we're both equal shields, and, you know, Dallas doesn't know I'm here, but I know he's coming up on my radar, I'm crouched here, I can just round this corner and just AR him, you know? He's gonna be, um, having his magnum out. He's not gonna be expecting me, you know? It, most, you know, in that scenario, he's probably gonna be rounding the corner, you know, probably, you know, looking towards blue. That's probably his, like, game plan. And, and in that situation, I'm gonna catch him off guard because I'm gonna have my AR out, which is gonna make a really easy encounter for myself. I don't wanna make it more difficult by, like, trying to you know around the corner magnuming him because like magnuming at close range is really awkward and you know, it's kind of hard to do especially when we're both moving really fast so I, you know if i walk if i around the corner and i mess that up he's gonna have an easy chance of just shitting on me you really don't want to give him that opportunity so you know it kind of makes you like a scumbag but you're gonna win a lot more if you just wait for somebody rounding the corner whip out the ar you know you give him that dirty strafe it's gonna make it very easy for you and you're gonna win a lot more one-on-ones you know you might you have to you know knock yourself down in the pride of using your magnum but it's gonna keep you alive and win you a lot more one-on-one -on -one. so don't be afraid to use your assault rifle in good like certain situations close range obviously uh it's a really good weapon it honestly is and also if you don't know holding crouch while you shoot your ar makes your uh bullets stay closer together as you can just see that little example i gave so holding your crouch your bullets stay tighter if you stand up your bullets spread more so Staying crouched while you're using the AR, including throwing your crouching strafe, is extremely advantageous. It also messes with the other person. So don't be afraid to use your AR, and also don't be afraid to throw on a nice crouch strafe. Another big thing I want to address is when it is a good time to use your grenades in any sort of one-on-one -on -one encounter. Uh, pretty much any time you're just in a normal engagement, you never, and I mean, like, never want to throw a grenade. You know, if I'm sitting here, and we both, like, three shots in, and I'm sitting here throwing a grenade, like, I'm stuck in that animation. You know, he can thruster. In Halo 5, everybody has a thruster. It's easy to get away. Plus, I'm in that weird, long, you know, grenade-throwing animation. He's going to have a very easy time killing me, you know, during which time I can't shoot. So you never want to be doing that in the middle of a gun battle where we're both out in the open. And also, I feel like a lot of people, their first reaction when Dallas pops behind this pillar is to throw a grenade at him. If he was just taking cover behind the pillar, you know, your first reaction is like, oh, let me throw a grenade at him. But that might not always be the best decision. Now, in some situations, it's perfectly fine to do. If, if Dallas and I were in engagement here, let's say I round a corner, he doesn't even see me, and I put two on him, he hides. Now, in this situation, let me let me rip an eight at him, because why not? You know, I'm already two shots up, he's got nothing to lose, uh, I have nothing to lose. If he jumps out at me, uh, you know, by the time I have my gun back out, I'll probably be fine. But the opposite would happen if he gets first two shots at me and I turn, he starts using that pole strafe like I talked about earlier. He puts two on me. Now I'm like, okay, he's behind that pole. I want to nade. But if he's any sort of smart player, he's just going to pause for a second, assume that I'm going to throw a grenade at him, and then pop out and catch me in that animation. So you really don't want to be caught throwing a grenade at him in that situation. In fact, in that situation, I would recommend that you run. But if you feel like you need a challenge or you really just can't run for whatever reason it might be, don't throw a grenade. Try to keep your gun drawn. He might be caught off guard expecting you to throw a grenade. And if you can, try to switch positions. So the moment he dips behind that pillar, you know, even if I can't run, I'm going to try to move a little bit so I'm a little bit different of an area where he was. 
when he first popped behind the pillar, I can catch him a little off guard, keep my gun drawn, and, you know, try to, uh, you know, get the shots back to equal. You know, if he gets two on me, I might get two back on him, and then we're even ground. Um, the last thing I'd like to say, if we're both one shot here, you know, let's say we're both one shot, and he dips behind the pillar, do not throw a grenade. He's going to peek. If we're both one shot, he's gonna pop out at me. He's gonna try to kill me. Keep your gun drawn. Wait for him. Hope that you can pick which side he's gonna be. Don't throw a grenade if you're both one shot. If you are if you have an advantage on him, if you have more shots on him than he does you, you can throw a grenade. I don't see how that as being a bad decision. If, you, if he has more shots on you, don't throw a grenade. And or if you guys are equal shields, try not to throw a grenade. Even if we haven't even shot at each other, if we're both five shots still, and he pops behind a pillar, don't throw a grenade at him because like I said, he's going to jump out while you're in the middle of doing that. Uh, he's going to have the first shot on you and you're going to be at a disadvantage. On the last thing I really want to touch on guys that I know that I used to have a problem with, I used to get really discouraged any single time that I would die in any sort of one-on-one -on -one situation, regardless if I was already weak from a previous encounter. I know that I, you know, it used to frustrate me knowing that like I felt like I should win every single time, but uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people need to understand and really, you know, just, just understand that you can't win every single one-on-one -on -one encounter and if you're already weak from a previous encounter or you you know you got naded or something don't beat yourself up because you can't win every single time so that being said uh, you know a lot of one-on-one -on -one encounters i feel like a lot of people want to engage every time and you know just you know outskill the other person but sometimes you really don't even need to ever intend on killing the person if you see somebody example dallas has overshield here i see him i'm not going to challenge that in this situation i'm running the first thing i'm going to do you know, you need to be on your feet, you know, on your toes, just just ready to move, you know, ready to make any play, any heads up play. You know, if Dallas gets first shot on me here and I start shooting him, I'm going to just drop out here. You know, I don't want to, like, if, if you're down a shot, it's always probably in your best interest to try to run. You know, you don't ever want to stay out in the open for too long and try to world star somebody. You know, if he gets first shot on me, unless I'm, like, stuck out in the open here, like, in this situation, I probably have nowhere to go. I'll probably turn and try to beat him. But if I'm close to cover, the first thing I want to do is probably try to get out of there. Because you're really not going to win at a high level versus somebody who has a first shot on you. It's probably not going to happen for you. So you want to play your life, make that your best interest. And if you can't get away, just try to put as many shots on them as possible. You know, don't expect to be able to turn and burn the person. You know, out, out BRing somebody, out DMRing them or out binding them when you have no shields. It's not a great feeling and it's awesome when it happens. But it's really not happen. It doesn't happen very often and you can't expect it to happen every time. So... If you're weak, you lose your shields, try to put as many shots on them as possible or try to play your life and get away. But don't beat yourself up and don't expect to win those one-on-one -on -one situations every time. Now, that's just a delusion. You, you really can't do that. So don't beat yourself up. Just try to make the best play possible in those situations. But yeah, guys, this is just some general one-on-one -on -one encounter tips I can give you. I hope some of these are helpful for you guys. You know, it's kind of hard for me to explain. Some of these things are like really difficult to teach. So I really hope I did a good job. You know, I'm trying to do my best here, but hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, give me some more suggestions down below of things you'd like to learn. I know a lot of people want to like me to try to run down quick scoping, uh, you know, kind of flashier snipe, like this flashier side of the snipe. So I'm going to try to do that. You know, that's going to be really difficult to try to explain, but I'm going to see if I can do that for you guys. But if you have anything else you'd like to see, make sure you comment that down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And yeah, thanks again for Dallas for helping me out. You know, he's been helping me out on all my videos. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below if you guys want to check that out. But, you know, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey for you I, I don't know what you guys might be playing on but i play as you see here on four sensitivity four to five is what i fluctuate from so you want to be playing somewhere well i like to play in the slower range where my